Good morning, folks. Filaments popping, active region boiling, umbral cores absent from its flank, along with solar flaring. We've got the top science news of the day, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the southern coronal hole finally having the last of its wide presence cross through the central heliographic longitudes. The plasma from that coronal hole is arriving at Earth this morning. Solar wind shows a minor intensification. On the right side of the chart, we see plasma density in orange bumps up and then as it falls away, the plasma speed in purple trends upward itself. That's the coronal hole stream we're entering this morning, and geomagnetic conditions are on the move from their quiet stability. Noteworthy, but not much expected in total. Two quick checks on weather. Tropical Storm Hannah formed in the Gulf and is heading for the Texas-Mexico border there. Eyes open. Meanwhile, let's look at Douglas out in the East Pacific and run through the weekend and early next week. Indeed, the hurricane is heading Hawaii's way, but in this forecast, we see the bulk of the storm is going to miss the islands. This forecast updates by the hour, so monitoring it will be important. Let's begin the articles with a look at the monsoon rains in Asia over the first seven weeks of the season. Not hard to see why the dams are in jeopardy there. Up next, a great lightning shot we're using as part of our continued look at the return stroke earth discharge aspect of lightning. Instead of fingering down from the clouds, we see numerous bolts in the same place with clear upward energy travel towards the end. Up next is Saturn, and this is the best shot seen round the net yesterday. But I took a look at the original and reprocessed to show off the distinct features of the rings here. Yes, it did require peaking the saturation, but as I go to compare the blander shot seen by most of the internet and my more colorful one, what I was going for was not the color, but the distinctions and differences you can now pick out in the ring features. Yesterday we saw the earthquake paper of 2020 so far on the sun triggering earthquakes. Today we've got five abstracts from the EGU annual conference meeting. Recall we just saw their look at rotation glitches affecting length of the day, but here we're looking at the location forecasting aspect of seismicity. In particular, it is interesting we once again see a few days notice of pre-seismic electromagnetic signals, which can be used with the solar timing to gauge both when and where. With the exception of a handful of these papers we've seen this year, again, all of the work proving these concepts is found in Chapter 7 of our book. Now we're moving off from the friendly publications to ducking a right hook and countering. A new paper in the world's top geophysics journal suggests the top and bottom of the forecasted global warming range can be cut off, solidifying the middle ground and the carbon sensitivity. Initial attack feral, but experienced. Identifying their physical model radiative balance, we find a focus on the incoming solar radiation and outgoing long wave. Counterattack. Target weakness. To be here in 2020, to see so many papers using proper space energy forcing, to see this one ignore the complexity in favor of simply delivering on a political paradigm, forces these jabs at their diligence. Opponent winded. Deliver main strike. The model also uses all those cloud forcing aspects like it's not the single greatest source of uncertainty, bias, and resulting error propagation in climate models. Retrospect. Attack cannot have been random. Analyze situation. Reviews of Geophysics is a largely invite journal. I'm sure there's some big names in science who can submit without being asked, but chances are this crew was commissioned to do this study. And so the question becomes, did they just decide on simplifications by chance on their own? or were they sent on a mission? There's more of that than most can handle in chapters 3 through 8 of our textbook. By the way, we do have a stack of slightly damaged copies available at otf.cells.com. Nice discount with those, and that's also where you can get our children's books, shirts, hats, and more. Last but not least, website members at suspiciousobservers.org, your two deeper looks this week are well worth absorbing. A deeper dive on the lightning thing and why it's the canary in the coal mine, and a deeper dive on the solar-triggered earthquakes paper. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.